Valerian was the last surviving dragon from Valeria, said to be the largest dragon ever. Each fang he possessed was longer than a sword and he could swallow a mammoth whole. In addition, it is said the extremely hot flames of Valerion melted the swords and metal used in the forging of the Iron Throne. This is by far one of my favourite dragons. I'll be sculpting Valerion's head and then later I'll try and turn it into an incense burner. So first I'll start by using styrofoam as an inner armature for the dragon head. I'm just cutting out random shapes to make the general form of the head. Alright, now using a blade I'll just be cutting and carving out chunks and pieces here and there just to refine the shape a bit more. There's just a lot of styrofoam everywhere doing this. I'm making such a mess. Now that I'm happy with the general shape, I'm going to use tin foil or aluminium foil and just cover the whole dragon head with it as a sort of a cushion for the clay. I also made the horns as well from, from tin foil so I can sculpt clay over it later but later you'll see that it didn't work out so well. So the clay that I'm using here is just um, normal standard air dry clay and I'm just going to first cover the whole head in clay, just a thick layer of clay first before starting to carve into it. The thing I like about this clay is that you can easily smooth it out just by using water. Okay, so using a sculpting tool, I'm just going to carve and smoosh and sculpt around just to get the, the more prominent shapes and more detail into it. So like I said before, the horns didn't work out so well. So my next plan is to use polymer clay instead and pre-bake them. They just kept on going all over the place and kept on falling off and the clay was just too heavy for the horns to, to stay in position and it was really difficult to smooth it into the rest of the head. And I'll also be sculpting the teeth with polymer clay as well because it would just make it easier and less risk of breaking. Okay, so time to rip off the old horns from the main sculpture. It looks like he is screaming in agony. I am so sorry, little dragon. And now I'm just replacing the old horns with the polymer clay ones.
All right, now it's time for a little bit more detail and I'm also just going to attach the gums so that there's a spot for the teeth to go into. I'm also just making the eyes as well while I'm at it. Now using a sharp tool, I'm just making holes into the gums and then I'm going to push the pre-baked polymer clay teeth into it so that it's nice and snug. As a kid I always used to be obsessed with dinosaurs and dragons and I don't think that ever left me. Like I still I still really have a special place in my heart for, for anything scaly. <laughs> Alright now most of the detail is in and the teeth are finally in. I'm just going to let it dry overnight. 24 hours later. So I messed up a bit and when it dried it sort of cracked. Because the clay shrinks when it starts to dry, there is a very big risk of it cracking, especially if you don't have enough cushioning on the armature itself. So I didn't leave enough space for it to shrink. And after hours of overthinking and staring into the distance while internally screaming, I have somewhat of an idea to fix this. I just really hope it works. All right, so my idea is to use wood filler. I know it sounds crazy, like why am I putting wood filler on clay, but wood filler doesn't shrink when it dries. It doesn't contract or anything, or it doesn't noticeably shrink. So if I fill up the cracks with wood filler, it won't detach from the clay sides, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to give it a try and hope for the best. So I'm just going to set it aside to dry and in the meantime, I'm going to create the little spines out of polymer clay. These spines usually go on the neck and certain areas on the face. Alright, so I'm also going to create the hundreds of little spines that you see on the dragon's face. This took me so long to do because I had to make so many little tiny facial spines and I had to do it out of air dry clay as well. I just find that the air dry clay would blend better into the facial features than if I had to make it out of the polymer clay. One eternity later. Alright, he is dry. And it looks like the wood filler worked actually quite well. I'm quite surprised. It didn't shrink or crack again or anything like that, which I'm very happy with. So it's time for a little bit of sanding just to smooth everything out a bit. I'll be carving in some scales and extra textures into the skin. So I started off by using a little hand file, but this was taking so long, I just didn't have the, the energy for it right now. And instead, I brought up my little sanding tool. I don't know why, but I always forget that I have this little thing. Okay, so remember all of those little spines that I had to sculpt? 
Well, it's time to attach them to the face. I'll just be using some contact adhesive as I find it's easier to stick as it dries really quickly. I even ran out of spines and I had to re-sculpt a whole bunch more. Sometimes I just think I like to punish myself. So this is what it looks like so far with all the tiny little spines on the face. And now I can add the polymer clay horns. I'll be putting a strip down the, the base of the neck as well as the throat. I also made these little fin type spines that usually go on the back of the neck. But I think that is it for this video. I still need to paint it, but that I'll leave for next video because otherwise this video would be way too long and I'm running out of time. <laughs> but I hope to see you for the next video and thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, please like and subscribe if you did.